Earlier this week, I reported that the Nintendo Switch had extremely good sales numbers, and Nintendo Switch games had extremely good sales numbers, thanks to the MPD report, which reflected sales from last month just in North America, and then Nintendo's own financial update, which included their sales worldwide of all of their products through June 30th of this year. So things are looking up for Nintendo Switch, but... What we don't really still know about much of is third parties and how third party games are performing. And that's, you know, probably because there's not a lot of third party games out there. But there is one third party game that came that kind of drew a little controversy. You see, Street Fighter 2, or I should say Ultra Street Fighter 2, to be exact, for Nintendo Switch, released, I, I think it was like May or March 26 or so, somewhere in there. And when the game came out, it cost $40. And this was a point of controversy because there were actually some systems with that exact same game that you could get it for $5. So $40 on Nintendo Switch versus $5 on some other systems out there is insane. You're paying a huge premium to have this game portable and home. Even if you want to argue, oh, it's like you're paying $20 because you get it for home console and portable and you're just paying for the 40 However you want to rationalize it, it was a, a pretty insane pricing model for a game that was already so cheap on other hardware. Well, Capcom is extremely happy with the performance of Ultra Street Fighter 2 on Nintendo Switch. In fact, in their first quarter correspondence to the market's, market's off-season, in the terms of the launch cycle of major titles, <laughs> I know, it's a lot of jargon to basically say this is just their uh, financial report, essentially, for the first quarter, uh, Capcom said this, Ultra Street Fighter 2 for Nintendo Switch, which was released in May 2017, made an excellent start and proved to be a smash hit. And then, you know, they go on to talk about Resident Evil 7, uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, uh, Monster Hunter Double Cross for Nintendo 3DS, contributed to the revenue as well. But they specifically say that Ultra Street Fighter 2 for Nintendo Switch was a smash hit. Smash hit. So, how well did it sell? Well, naturally, uh, they didn't give us any exact sales figures. Uh, but what they did tell us is how many units they shipped. And they shipped 450,000 units at, for last quarter. So if you consider that, uh, let's say they sold, through, sold 400,000 of those units or whatever. Uh, that's really good, especially if the thing is a smash hit. So it's got to be a really high attach rate to units shipped. Now it is notable that they do list this as Wii, Wii U, and Nintendo Switch. Uh, but they like I said, again, they note over and over again, Nintendo Switch is where it's at. That's what's sold, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they aren't really separating out the hardware. As an example, they have PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 linked together, even though the games didn't come out on both platforms, PSP and PS Vita. They're just kind of linking all the consoles together. <laughs> example, Nintendo DS and 3DS. So Wii, Wii U and Nintendo Switch that you're seeing in this graph on screen doesn't mean anything. It's just a grouping of, uh, of hardware that they potentially might make games for. And yeah, so Ultra Street Fighter 2, those 450,000 units shipped are for the Nintendo Switch. And man... Smash hit, 450,000 units. There's a potential they sold 450,000. And what we're seeing on store shelves now are new shipments. So, I mean, there is a potential they sold through their entire shipments for last quarter. Uh, that is really, really, really good numbers. And it's really good numbers for a number of reasons. One, because, I mean, we're talking about Street Fighter 2. Okay, the game that originally released ages ago, 20, 30 years ago. I don't know, it's been a long time since they, since Street Fighter 2 came out. And I know they've added characters and updated visuals and did all this stuff for the Ultra version. And this is like the 20 billionth time they've re-released Street Fighter 2. But uh, the fact that, despite all that, they sold almost 500,000 of these bad boys on Nintendo Switch. And were able to sell it at a premium price of $40. You want to know what the crazy profit margins were on those 450,000 units they shipped? That's insane. The, the profit margins are huge, especially compared to $5 on other systems. Um, so that's just, and that's units like shipped. So that, that doesn't even include digital sales. You throw digital sales in there, I guarantee they're over 500,000 on Switch. I mean, this is... This is awesome. Um, 
it's awesome for a number of reasons. I mean, it's not awesome that we obviously got charged forty dollars for a product that was worth five on most systems. But what is awesome about this is uh, the age-old adage that uh, third parties need to see games perform well on Switch in order to bring their newer games to the platform. It is something that a lot of us don't like talking about because we don't like being slighted. You know, when you're getting Ultra Street Fighter 2, a game that was out on other platforms, and it's a, just a re-release of a really, really old game, um, and you're using that as a barometer of success for releasing future games, uh, it makes people upset because it's like, okay, why don't you give us a current-gen game, like a game that just released on time on other platforms, see how that performs, and then judge if you should bring more of them, but that's not the way third parties treat the Switch or Nintendo. They're like, look, we're going to give you, outside of, uh, I can give some credit to 2K, they are giving us the current version of NBA 2K18 with apparently no compromises. Um, obviously, it's not going to look quite visually as stunning, but it, uh, from everything they told us, it's the full version of the game, so that's that's excellent. Um, but that's like an, anom an anomaly. I mean, think about it. We're going to Skyrim. That, that's one of our big third-party releases. Rocket League, again, one of our big third-party releases. Another game that's been on other platforms. Uh, Minecraft was one of the big releases this year. Uh, so you, you kind of get into this feeling that, you know, you're releasing these older games and seeing how they perform, uh, determining the future of, you know, third-party support on the platform. Well, Capcom, because Ultra Street Fighter 2 was such a smash hit, they had this to say. Um, it said, with the 450K in the first quarter for Ultra Strike Street Fighter 2, uh, and because it was above expectations, Capcom is now starting to prepare multiple Switch version titles. Now, this is important Switch version titles. Not Switch exclusive titles, Switch version titles. That means these are games that they have released or will be releasing on other platforms. Essentially, this means that Capcom's all like almost all hands on deck with Nintendo Switch. Uh, Resident Evil 7's coming to Switch. We, we just know that's going to happen now. Um, Resident Evil 7's on... You know, whatever. I mean, well, okay. I guess I can't. We can't know for sure that Resident Evil Seven is coming to Switch, but I have a feeling it's coming to Switch. Um, yeah, Capcom is going to start heavily supporting the Switch, and this is before we get to Monster Hunter, right? Monster Hunter Double Cross next month is going to do huge numbers in Japan, um, and probably enough to justify it to come out in the West, where it'll probably do decent numbers as well. Um, I, I see that's going to sell probably at least a million units total on Switch, if they can get enough Switches out there to consumers. There are over a million Switches sold in Japan, so maybe every single person in Japan will buy it. I have no idea. Um, almost everybody in Japan bought Splatoon 2, so... Uh, it, it's getting nuts right now. The Switch is riding high, and as much as I hate, you know, seeing that third parties have to be this way to give us support, it worked for Capcom, uh, and Capcom's the reason that it has 4 gigs of RAM in the first place, because they told Nintendo they want to double the amount. Well, now it feels like Capcom is like, okay, we, we dipped our toes in the water with Street Fighter 2. Uh, we know Monster Hunter is going to sell. Like, that's just a given. So we dipped our toes in the water with, with Street Fighter 2, a non-Monster Hunter entity, and holy crap, people on the Switch want our games. Yeah, I wouldn't even be surprised if they brought Street Fighter 5 over to, to, to it at this point. Uh, I think Capcom is now, based on their own words, starting to prepare multiple Switch version titles. Switch version, as in titles that are on other systems, they're going to make a Switch version of it. Uh, Capcom's on board. This is awesome and for third-party support reasons this is great uh, it's a good sign and i'm hoping that skyrim equally performs well uh so bethesda can be like hey look skyrim is doing really really well we should think about bringing our other titles to this platform our dishon you know bringing a dishonored collection together so there's a chance of getting dishonored three in the future uh or you know any other titles they feel are appropriate that they're they have in development right now and i hate thinking that we as switch owners have to buy these older games to prove this to third parties but i mean we just did it and it just worked so we just got to keep doing it uh so yeah uh, tomorrow I am going into the store to put in a pre-order on Skyrim, put a pre-order on NBA 2K18, which I was going to buy anyways. <laughs> um, I'm also going to probably put a pre-order in on FIFA, even though I'm not a believer in it. I am a believer that I want, there are games EA have, like, has in their catalog that I want, like Madden, so I'm going to have to support this FIFA game uh, to ensure that 
EA sees more demand. And I implore you guys, if you want these companies, or some of your favorite companies, you want their games on this platform, go support them. I mean, obviously, don't just throw away your money if you're not going to play the game. Like, don't go buy Skyrim if you're not going to play Skyrim. Like, I'm going to actually play these games when I buy them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy Capcom's on board. We did it, folks. Uh, we have one major third-party company uh, going full board here with the Nintendo Switch moving forward. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike this video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much. Seriously, you guys are what make me smile every day, make this channel possible. And <laughs> this weekend, I'm actually busy at my daughter's, my six year old daughter's uh, end of summer, end of summer, quote unquote. Uh, softball tournament so uh i'm hoping that things go well for her and she's in t-ball so I, I guess i guess it's called t-ball softball i don't know anyways um so i got a pretty busy weekend but you know what i had to get this video out because i'm so happy you know good news for the switch from a third party company um even if it meant we got price gouged to, to make it happen uh anyways folks i will catch you in the next one